What's going on there, folks? Good evening. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> Not Friday night yet, but it is Friday, uh, September 22nd, 2023. It is about 12.04 p.m. here, California time. On this fine Friday, and latest activity looks like a 2.9 into the region of Oklahoma. We are seeing a little bit of activity stirring up here outside the OKC region. Uh, just northwest of Prague, I'm not for sure if we got any oil fields out there or not, but uh, occasionally we do see some of these regions get hit with some smaller earthquakes. It looks like Oklahoma is filling in a little bit today. Uh, back into the Pacific Northwest, still seeing a handful of earthquake activity across the region of Mount St. Helens and a little bit of Mount around Mount Rainier. A little bit further up northwest, north of Olympia, seeing a 2.0. Uh, that earthquake coming in yesterday... As far as recent activity goes, we did have an earthquake out here on the Blanco Fracture Zone late last night, 3.0. Uh, looks like a little swarm of activity here outside the Eureka area. Now, this is the southern end of the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Uh, looks like most of these around uh, 20 kilometers deep or so into the southern edge of this uh, subduction zone region. A couple twos yesterday and today. As far as any major movement goes across California, really not seeing it. Slight uptick, though, across the northern Sierra Nevada mountains there. Uh, no major swarms going on across southern California. We do have one earthquake, though, off the Brawley Seismic Zone. That's the extensional fault system here of the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault. 1.5 coming in within the last hour. All right, as far as worldwide activity goes, still seeing quite a bit of movement, of course, around the Vanuatu area, Solomon Islands. And some return of deep, super deep earthquake activity out here into the Tonga Trench. Uh, the latest one, a 4.3, 512 kilometers deep. Uh, that deeper activity will add further strain. But it looks as though, uh, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, that we're looking at that bouncing back and forth between deep movement, shallower earthquake activity along the plate boundary. If there's enough strain built up here at the surface regions where the subduction zone sits, then we'll see earthquake activity ramp back up here along with deeper movement uh, into the subduction zone. So it's just, it's a, it's a cycle of activity here. If you watch these things enough, you'll know that, uh, you know, most of these areas have that uh, bouncing back and forth type movement here across this plate boundary. And that's generally where all the, the strain and momentum tends to build up here. You got the uh, Pacific plate moving off to the Northwest, the arrows, uh, and that does add strain right along this plate boundary that's all reinforced here also by the australia plate so quite the dynamic area in terms of earthquake potential all right uh, see what else we got here across the izu trench a couple of these from yesterday we did have another earthquake here into the uh, izu trench area uh, although at the surface levels uh, about 10 kilometers deep or so 5.0 about 9 30 in the morning local time here curl kamachaka trench is pretty quiet Nothing major going on there for now. And a handful of earthquakes across the Aleutian Trench, including a 5.0 earlier this morning. For the most part, up north, though, into the uh, main areas of Alaska, pretty quiet. Uh, of course, there's always going to be microquake movement, and that's pretty much what we're seeing. No major scale, no major large scale activity, though, to note. Uh, over here, eastern Afghanistan, one earthquake from yesterday. As far as any, uh, let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks somewhat quiet. Not a whole lot of movement taking place here across the Mediterranean right now. Um, same for, uh, well, India's got a few earthquakes popping up here. 3.8 and a couple other smaller quakes within this region. Java Trench, pretty quiet. At least the northern segment here. Uh, getting a pretty good cluster of activity once again around the Indonesia Islands area. This could be around the Maluka Sea, Banda Sea region. All seeing, uh, you know, that pressure gradient work its way along this plate boundary. The last one, early this morning, a 5.8, 155 kilometers deep. So we'll continue to watch this area. Uh, as far as New Zealand goes, let's double check the uh, New Zealand region. Stand by for a second. While I pull this up, uh, 3.2, it looks like, South Island an hour or so ago. Of course, we did have that uh, six-pointer come in a few days ago now. Well, a couple days. It almost feels like a few days ago, but a couple days ago. That uh, is still having some aftershock activity within that region of South Island. I'm going to go down here and double-check that. 
Uh, looks like things are still active here across the South Island area, right around where that six-pointer struck. So quite the earthquake swarm kicking up here uh, or aftershock activity. But there's always that potential uh, of seeing, you know, potentially a larger damaging earthquake following this movement. So just keep an eye on the South Island area. Uh, up in the northern section of this area, doesn't look like we're seeing too much activity Handful of smaller microquakes, but uh, overall general seismic activity along that plate boundary looks typical for now, aside from that swarming down south. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Anything major going on here across the uh, rest of the globe? Doesn't look like it. Older activity here across the Middle America Trench. It's going to be over here off the coast of Nicaragua. There's a, you know, a lot of activity here across the subduction zone, but the USGS will only show the uh, 4.0 and above most of the time. Uh, so a little bit of activity on the smaller range kicking up there in the last 24 hours. All right, uh, let's see. And the big island of Hawaii looks uh, somewhat quieter today. Not a whole lot of movement currently taking place there across the volcanoes. Just kind of watch them. The... Uh, Latest information statement here was from a couple days ago on Kilauea Volcano, so nothing new to report on any of the volcanoes there. Uh, space weather is getting pretty jumping, so to speak. Uh, quite a few um, sunspots that are currently facing us, including this massive one right here. Looks pretty dynamic. It is pretty much uh, a dead square bullseye earth directed sunspot if anything were to blast off from here we're looking at uh you know the effects being strongly felt on earth and uh kind of looking at this picture here i see two eyes a nose and somewhat of a an evil grin uh that anybody else see that of course we're, we're known to you know create animals and stuff out of clouds and shapes and patterns but i see a face out there kind of grinning Okay, so let's look at the uh, sunspot regions. This was last night here. The magnetogram image, the current most recent updated one, still shows some complexity here within the sunspot region. And uh, it looks as though this area down here in the southeastern quadrant of the sun is showing some strengthening and complexity uh, within that magnetic core as well. So we'll continue to watch these uh, regions here as they are facing the Earth. Right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55%, and X flare still remains somewhat elevated at about 10% probability. Uh, we are expecting uh, maybe a G1 class storm here coming up in the next couple nights, 23rd and 24th time period. Uh, not anything huge. I think this will be a lot weaker than what we've seen oh, during our last event there, where we've seen a, a G3 storm kick up. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, report back on that if anything does enhance uh let's see storm prediction center out here today across the country uh, not a huge threat in a couple areas of slight risk category and it looks like there is a five percent probability of tornadoes within those zones as well that includes areas of virginia beach norfolk um and also in the two percent area you can see uh you know that tornado potential as well but the five percent is just where the most dynamics are taking place in terms of well, in terms of tornado potential, also got some wind and some hail threat out here. Main hail threat up here in eastern Wyoming, portions of Nebraska and South Dakota as well. So just a heads up. All right, folks, uh, we're going to jump off here. I uh, got pretty uh, pretty busy day for Friday, but I uh, hope everyone's enjoying their um, start of the weekend. And uh, we'll be covering this little tropical storm out here. A little bit more in detail later uh, this afternoon. We got this one that looks like it has kicked up into a tropical, um, what well, was tropical cyclone 16, but it is now upgraded to a tropical storm. Ophelia, is that right? Looks like that's right. I'm going to have to double check on that. I've got these interesting names coming up this year. Uh, either way, um, current, uh, let's see what we got for current wind. Looks like about 60 mile per hour sustained winds moving at north, moving to the north northwest at about 12 miles per hour. Uh, that is just off the coast here of the North Carolina region, and um, I don't think it's going to have time to strengthen into anything extraordinary. It's just going to be quite a bit of uh, rain and some wind, 
but uh, you know the wind is not going to be quite as heavy duty as what it could be if it was a stronger system. Uh, definitely seen some rain out here across the area as we speak and that will continue as that marches towards the northwest here throughout the day today. Quite a bit of lightning strikes out here as well but you notice the radar imagery is not covered out here. Uh, but it looks like there's definitely quite a bit of uh, thunderstorms brewing out there. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good day. Have a good night. Well, well, we'll be back here a little bit later tonight, but enjoy your Friday. Have a good one.